You got it. Good morning, everybody. Chris, why don't you start us off? All righty. Uh, Coach, it was a great weekend, a uh, great game against Syracuse, a great atmosphere, but 15 turnovers and only 80% of the clears. Was that sloppiness or was it whatever Syracuse did to uh, induce it? I think a lot of things, uh, you know, we, we uh, unfortunately were a little impatient on some of those clears and, and just weren't disciplined with our, our execution. You know, we, we try to take it out and, and, you know, when they would double team us or we'd have the ball, we just need to redirect it and be a little more patient. And at times we weren't, um, you know, you can chalk that up to just, you know, maybe us being impatient, you can also chalk it up to, you know, I thought Syracuse played hard and, and um, you know, played with great effort. And uh, so I think probably a combination of things. Uh, and I think that was one of the things we talked about at halftime, um, you know, that second quarter, um, you know, we just, a lot of things kind of came together. We had a lot of quick possessions, you know, we were, you know, kind of created either kind of given or created or some transition happened regardless of what, how you want to say it, but we had some transition opportunities and, and we can the last one uh, with Roman. And I thought that was a big goal, but we had three or four that didn't work out. Um, I thought their kid made a good save and I thought they defended those breaks pretty well. Um, and then we failed some clears. So that led to a lot of defense. Um, and, and, you know, when that happens, you're just kind of wearing your defense down and, you know, you're kind of allowing the other team to get into a flow and get comfortable um, and just felt like we had maybe two settled really good possessions in the second quarter. So uh, stuff we just got to get better at it's early season. Uh, but yeah, there was, Definitely some frustration, you know, with with the way that, you know, we kind of read some of those things. But again, have enough confidence in our guys. We'll, we'll kind of work on it. We need to work on it because Princeton is riding very, very well right now. Um, and they put up, you know, 44 goals in two games. So and, and they're riding. If you look at some of their stats, their their riding stats are. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, as a follow-up to that, uh, it's are situational things something you worked out? Because to me, some of the mistakes were like not recognizing the situation you're up by three at the end of the third and there's us real we have uh terps have possession and uh just a absurd throwaway do the guys understand if there's a minute and a half left or is it always go and score i mean how you know to what extent do you you know what's your philosophy on that yeah, yeah, we we work on situations. Uh, I think it's something that we take a lot of pride in. Um, and I didn't think we were great um, on Sunday. So obviously, I need to do a better job of putting our guys in those spots and, and making sure that, you know, they have those experiences in practice. And even though they're not the same as a game that's the best thing you can do is, is kind of try to replicate that and and make sure the guys have, you know, understanding of, all right, what are we trying to do right now? Um, and again, that's the beauty of playing good teams. That's the beauty of the early season is there's a lot of growth um, and the best, you know, teachers experience. You're going to sometimes do it well, sometimes not do it well. Um, and then you on Monday and Tuesday, um, you know, for us Tuesday, because we had to take Monday off. Um, you know, kind of got back and said, all right, you know, these are things we need to be better at. Um, and win, lose or draw, we do kind of the same, um, you know, and just try to look for ways to get better because you're going to see those situations again. Um, and then, you know, people watch film much like we watch film and they look for vulnerabilities. So you have to clean those things up. You got to work on those things or, you know, you're going to run into the same situation. Um, and I think Princeton's a really well-coached team. So, um, you know, they're going to dissect that film and, and look for vulnerabilities for us. So we've got to do a good job of improving this week. Uh, so when we see some of those things, we, we just, 
you know, have better results. And, and I'm confident in our guys. I know they're prideful. Um, and again, I, I loved our heart and our effort. I, I thought our guys played so hard on Sunday, uh, just a lot of cleanup. Um, but again, I, I know they'll put in the time and I, I know they'll put in the focus. Yeah. Hey, five and zero against Syracuse as a Terp coach. That's not a bad record coach. Well, I haven't scored in any of those games. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, at any time that the obviously, you know, Maryland plays Syracuse, you know, you're playing a great team. So um, thankful that the Terps can can get a win over a great program. And, you know, I think the most important thing for us is, is realizing if the staffs had to play, um, probably would have been in trouble, um, you know. <laughs> I think Bobby, Carol, and Jesse are, are good players, but I don't think I would have helped us much, um, and that would have been tough. So I think we would have come out on the losing end of that one with with the staff they have. But they've done a great job. Uh, uh, just they were very organized and, and well coached, and um, you know you could tell they 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 have a a great sense of purpose. They're playing hard. They had a lot of energy and the crowd was great. So it was a great environment for us and the trip and everything will be just so valuable for us down the road. Coach, jumping to this week, um, just want to ask you, you know, as a former uh, Ivy League coach, um, just how much better is it for college across with the Ivy Leagues playing? And also, does that make it maybe a little bit more difficult not having a, you know, I know Princeton has two games now, but not, you know, missing a whole year of film. Um, does that hurt, especially in the early season? Yeah, um, two great questions. Yeah, I mean, the tradition, the Ivy League is very good. Um, you know, I think all of the Ivy League schools, you know, you, you look and they've had their moments where they've been some of the best teams. So uh, competitive league, um, you know, I think with the student athletes that that are out there playing in, in the youth and high school level, there's a lot of good players for them to pick from um, and, and they're desirable destinations and, and they're, they have good traditions. So, um, you know, Princeton, you know, you look at their tradition and, and what Coach Tierney built there, um, pretty impressive. And, um, you know, now that they're back, you're right, like it poses some challenges um, because, you know, they have two games and, you know, last night they subbed out pretty well in the, in the fourth quarter. So you're not even looking at eight full quarters um, of, you know, what they, you know, of, of their personnel. Um, they play a lot of people, um, you know, much like Syracuse, Syracuse offensively, what they did with us was different than um, in a lot of ways, um, some similarities, but a lot of things they kind of saved from the Holy Cross game. So um, we have to anticipate the same. Um, there'll be some things that maybe they haven't shown yet. Um, so we have to kind of anticipate some of those things to get our guys ready. Um, but you got to go back to 2020. And that was one of the things I mentioned to the guys. You know, you, you could have argued when we got stopped in 2020, this was the best team in the country. Um, and, and there were several teams that could make, you know, that claim as well. Um, and, and, you know, you, Syracuse was very hot at that time. And, and so was Cornell. But, you know, Princeton had just come off being Hopkins in Virginia. And a lot of those kids are back. Um, and after not playing uh, for the last you know, a couple of years, they're playing with just great spirit. They're playing hard. Um, and I think they're valuing every opportunity. Hey, Coach, uh, I was wondering after, you know, coming back after that second quarter and, and winning that game, what do you think the biggest takeaway from the Syracuse game uh, is going to be heading into this weekend against Princeton? Um, I think a lot of things, you know, I'm not sure I have a biggest, but um, you know, going on the road, we were concerned about, um, you know, it's it's never easy to travel and, and just different things happen. You're out of your comfort zone. Um, and that's why, you know, people always love to play at home. Certainly we love playing in Maryland Stadium. And, you know, we had not gone on the road since the fall and we purposely, you know, played Cornell up in New Jersey and, um, you know, we got up early in that morning and drove up and got out of the bus and kind of got loose and played. Um, so we put a lot of friction on our guys, made it difficult after four hours in the bus to try to play, um, you know, had to kind of change in the gym. It was a great atmosphere. It was a really good experience, but um, wanted our guys to be a little uncomfortable um, knowing that, you know, we had some tough road trips ahead of us. So, um, you know, the trip was great um, going up there. It was long, um, you know, it's a long bus ride. We had some snow, which slowed us down even more. So um, didn't get a chance to practice there uh, in the dome on Saturday uh, because of hoops game, which is, is normal. 
Um, so, you know, kind of getting in there, different environment, um, you know, big crowd. Um, so I thought it was a, just, again, a really good experience for our guys to have to kind of get dialed in, get focused. Um, and, you know, some things uh, went our way early and then some things didn't. And we had to rise to the challenge. We had to stick together. Um, and I thought that was the, the halftime couldn't have come at a better time for us. Um, they went on a run, which, you know, you would anticipate they do. Um, and then we had to come back out and, and kind of take a couple punches and then come back out and, and you know, kind of counter. Um, and I thought our guys did that. Um, and then they countered again and then we countered. So, again, being in those games and, and those games that are slugfest, and I really felt like that game was a slugfest. Um, you know, just every ground ball was contested, every ride, every clear, uh, every offensive and defensive possession. So, that intensity, I think, will serve us well in some of the games we have coming up, certainly on Saturday. So I think those are a lot of the takeaways. I think realizing that, you know, playing hard is just not enough. We've got to execute. Um, you know, we've got to have better in-game management. Um, you know, to Bruce's comment, you know, there were some things that happened. And, you know, in the context of the game, situa situational awareness is really important. Um, and I thought in certain at certain times we did a great job. Um, but you got to do it well over 60 minutes. And I think that's what everybody's trying to do right now. Um, you're trying to, you know, kind of create your team's identity, work on your chemistry, um, you know, put the pieces together. Um, but as people are getting film on you, you're trying to adjust to what people are doing um, and then kind of um, kind of counter that and stay one step ahead. Um, and, and luckily, we have obviously you know dedicated guys and, and a dedicated staff that is committed to kind of continue to evolve. And uh, that's the fun part about the journey. Coach, I have to ask you something. Uh, two fans came up to me at the end of the game. They were Syracuse fans and they say, uh, he says, we got a feeling that you're involved with the Maryland program. I said, yeah, you know, I'm wearing a Maryland jacket or whatever. He said, you, ha I, you have to get Coach Tillman a message for me. So I said, well, go ahead. He said, so I'm wondering what he's going to say. So he says to me, uh, I, wanted, I just want to congratulate him on being a really, really classy coach. So I said, well, he is one, but what makes you say that? You know, you know, I doubt that you've ever been. He said he didn't score that goal at the end of the game or the team didn't score the goal. Well, and they had four open net possibilities. And after what happened in, in the basketball world where a great guard from Wisconsin called the timeout with 12 seconds left in a game that was a blowout, uh, and it, it ignited a whole controversy. Uh, was that a message to your team? I'm just curious. We don't need that last goal. Or is, was it more the team saying we don't need that last goal? Um, I think, again, just practicing situational awareness. Um, you know, we, we had an extra guy. You know, we had a man up. We had we had the ability just to move the ball and kill the clock. And at that point, you know, being up four, we we didn't need to score to win. So it was more competing against the clock. Um, and again, that was, again, just a great situation to be, you know, in in that if if it's two goals or one goal um, down the road, you know, we've got a little bit of a dry run. And even if, you know, they had pressured us and we had lost the ball, you know, we had a little bit of buffer. But, you know, for us, you know, if, if they forced us to the goal, we had to um, or the shot clock was running down and, um, you know, we, we kind of felt like, OK, they might get multiple trips like we might need that goal. You might factor that in. But um, in no way, I, I think for us, would we ever try to run up the score on purpose? Um, I just, you know, just think this is college athletics. It's um, it's about doing the right things and representing the school well. And um, there are certain things that we should be teaching the guys. Um, you know, that being said, you know, I understand both sides of if you're in a game and it's lopsided and whether we're winning or losing and new players come in, it, it's hard to tell a guy who's practiced all week, hey, don't go to the goal. This is their opportunity. So um, if we're ever in that spot and we're playing against a team and, and you know, they're up by a lot and their backups are, are, are going to the goal, I don't take offense to that. I, I almost would rather have that where the guys are just playing the game versus just standing there and, and just, 
kind of holding the ball, it, unless it's under 20 seconds or so, if there's five or six minutes left, it's like, just keep playing. Like you've worked that hard all, you know, all, all those practices and all those, you know, fall practices when you get in, just play. Um, but I, I think bigger thing, there's no reason to rub it in. I, I think with social media and some of the stuff going on, it's just not something that um, I stomach very well. Um, just some of the things that people are doing and what they're posting. Um, I just feel like, you know, conducting yourself the right way, playing the right way is enough. Um, you don't need to boast about it. You don't need to talk about it. Um, you know, people who watch will know. Um, but it's, kind of not the world we live in anymore. Um, you know, social media is here you know, for the duration. So you just got to navigate it and we just got to stay true to what we believe in, in our locker room and make sure that we're emphasizing those things to our guys. And um, certainly if we ever sense that our guys are maybe doing that, that would be something we would talk about with them. We want to be prideful of who we are and what we do, but I think there's a difference between being prideful and boastful and um, kind of rubbing it in. I just don't think that's, you know, what you're trying to teach young people. Hey, eight different people scored on the Sunday and nine people had scores or assists. Is that the best part of the game? I mean, that's got to make you like, you know, happy that everybody was involved and, you know, because for eight people to score, that doesn't happen often. Yeah, and Especially I, with only 14 goals. I think for us, you know, that's the way we're built, you know, and, and, and again, if, if you do that, I think there are all these extra benefits when you spread the wealth. Uh, if somebody goes down, you know, you can keep moving along with, you know, not as much of an impact if instead of relying on one guy. Um, I think it's a little harder to scout and say, hey, if we take away these guys, you know, much like, um, you know, when you talk football, you know, Belichick usually will take away, you know, your your best receiver, you know, or if you run the ball, he'll try to make you become a passing team. So, you know, if you're a little more diverse and a little less predictable, um, I do think it's a little harder to defend. Um, so, and I also feel like guys are more excited when they know that, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to have an impact. It's not going to be just one guy that's dodging or just a couple guys that we're hanging our hat on. Everybody's going to get a slice of the pie. Um, so in a lot of ways, there's all these extra benefits that you get. Um, and again, that those are things that you hope help you as you go down the stretch here, because people are going to get film. And, you know, if we had just one offense and one or two guys that we relied on, you know, people can start looking at different ways to, all right, you know, what do we need to do to those guys? Do we shut them off? Do we put our best bot guy on them? And um, and then we really don't support them and, and make somebody else beat you. Um, so I think those things are helpful for us. Um, you know, I thought Roman's goal was a really big goal. Um, and again, I, I thought we had some really good transition opportunities um, that we didn't capitalize, but I'm glad we got them. And uh, now we just got to do better at that. And again, I give Syracuse credit for defending them well. Um, you know, and, and, and taking away those opportunities. Um, so we just got to execute on a higher level, and that's what we're going to focus on uh, the next few days here. Coach, against, against High Point, you guys gave up 13 goals, and you talked about wanting to get that number down a little bit. Well, against Loyola, it was, it was eight, and then 10 against Syracuse. Is, has your defense, in your mind, kind of rounded into form, or what's been going on on the defensive end lately? We're getting more experience. Um, I think some of our guys – um, are getting better. I think Bubba Fairman has done a really good job for us. I thought Jack Course gave us some really good minutes. Um, you know, Ajax has now started three games at close, and he had a really tough matchup. Uh, Tucker Dordovic is a heck of a player um, and uh, so impressed with him and that Syracuse team. But he's a, he's a tough cover. Um, he's very dynamic. He's two-handed. He shoots the ball well from just about everywhere. It keeps his head up. Um, he's a guy that if you're a fan of lacrosse, you, you definitely want to watch him play because uh, he's just super dynamic. Um, and that was a tough matchup for him and just his third start at close. So um, I think some of those younger guys are, are, are getting or the inexperienced guys are getting better. Um, and I think that's going to help us. Um, but I still think if you watch, you know, there were times on on Sunday we had two guys sliding and we didn't communicate as well. Um, did like some of our approaches. 
Um, again, some of our situational awareness on some things. Um, again, I, I know the, our guys aren't aren't super excited about it because they're prideful. So we'll get back to work. We worked on some of those details yesterday, tried to clean some of those things up. Uh, film's a great teacher. Um, I think those guys are able to kind of see in the moment, here's what you did and here's what we want to do. Uh, Jesse does a great job, he and Carol Kennedy. So uh, we'll get back to some fundamentals, but we're also trying to prep up for a really good Princeton team. And then um, late against Syracuse, there was a moment where uh, Bubba Fairman, he got his stick in the passing lane and broke up, broke up a pass and hit the turf. Maryland came up with it and quickly went the other way, scored that 14th goal. Defense is a little bit new for him playing that short stick D midi role. How has his veteran presence kind of integrated and helped some of the younger guys? Uh, you know, Bubba's decision, and I know, um, you know, there were a couple posts on it last last week, but, uh, and we talked a little bit about it on here, but, you know, Bubba, like just, it tells you everything you need to know about Bubba. He's always been a guy since he got here, such a good athlete. Um, I mean, he could play any position on the field, um, was a great high school attackman, um, but he's such a good athlete. He's always been a two-way guy for us. So, um, over the last few years, he's he's a guy that when he got back, much like Timmy Rotance, who, who kind of took him under his wing when he was younger, um, you know, Timmy's a guy that if he went back on defense, he just knew where he wanted to force guys. He knew how to defend picks. He knew how to slide and recover. Great clear. So I think a lot of the attributes that Timmy had, you see in Bubba, and that's what you hope with your older players as they're mentoring them. Um, and Bubba's decision to just voluntarily go, hey, I'll go down there. Um, you know, we have, we're a little bit short right now in terms of experience. So I played a lot of defense, uh, which he has, um, and it's made that transition a lot smoother. Um, but he knows what the offenses are doing. Um, he's been on that side, which makes things a lot easier because um, you can anticipate things because you're like, OK, this guy has shown on film. He, he likes this move. Um, you know, I can anticipate where he's going. So if that's the case, here's where I need to be. Um, you know, he's he's run off picks. So when guys are setting picks, he kind of knows what they're trying to do. Um, so there's a lot of carry over, which is great. Um, but I think having one of the best players, you know, coming out of high school, make that decision to go. I volunteer to kind of go to maybe in, in some people's eyes, a, a less glamorous role it just sends a message to, you know, your team. And your, especially your young players, um, your recruits, but also everybody that follows sport of lacrosse, like, you know, it is a team game and you're successful because of guys like Bubba. Um, and we have a lot of guys that do the same. Uh, people aren't talking about them, but we've had a lot of guys, you know, kind of swallow their pride or take lesser roles because they want to win because they care about their teammates and they want the you know, the, the sum to be greater than the parts. And we have some pretty good parts. Um, you know, John Geppert's playing long stick for us. He had not played long stick till he got here. And I think he's terrific. Um, and he's got an even brighter future. Um, but, you know, sometimes when you ask a guy to change his role, you know, it's, it's uneasy, you're uncomfortable. Um, and it's hard to give up a lot of that comfort. Um, so you're starting over again. And a lot of guys wouldn't do that. And it just speaks to Bubba and the type of guys that we've had here um, for a long time. And again, just more of a reminder why I'm so thankful to be here. All right. Thanks, coach. Appreciate it.